Hey, good morning. Welcome to Munhollands Worship Service. So glad that you joined us today. I hope that you had a great 4th of July and uh, so glad to be with you in worship today. Whether you're joining us from your homes online or whether you are in the sanctuary live with Munhollan today, welcome home, welcome back. We're so glad that you're with us for worship today. Just a couple of announcements for you. First, if you are in the sanctuary, please be sure to wear your mask throughout the duration of the service and to maintain social distancing of six feet. Also use the hand sanitizer provided frequently. And uh, thank you so much for abiding by these guidelines to help us to stay safe as we worship God together. We also want to uh, point your attention to there's a front yard social this week at the Beck's house at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday. and uh, Just a time of hanging out for fun and fellowship uh, as we do that social distancing outside. There's also still time to sign up for Counterculture, uh, a Bible study by David Platt, which is going to be held on Zoom and led by Rhonda Knox. It's a great study, and uh, it starts this Tuesday night, 6 p.m., uh, July 7th. So I hope you'll sign up for that. It's going to be a great time. Finally, there are some upper room devotionals available for pickup in the Elmere hallway, uh, which are just a $2 donation if you don't mind leaving that as well. So thank you so much again for joining us, and uh, let's worship the Lord together with gladness because He is good. His love endures forever. It doesn't matter. Oh, it is. Welcome back, everyone. Isn't it nice to be here for our first in-person service? Welcome. Um, there's been a lot of changes. There's been a lot of changes. So when 
you know, make sure we go back and look at the renovations. I know a lot has been done in the few months it's, that it's been since we have been here. So again, welcome. Good morning. I had about an hour's notice I would be speaking this morning. Sarah had five minutes on the way here, so uh, thank you very much. Um, Jonathan is fine, first of all. He and his family are fine. He really wanted to be here. His daughter, I think, was babysitting or, or uh, someone and was exposed to the coronavirus, and so um, she's quarantining. Jonathan said he had some, some mild symptoms within the last few days. Uh, Mary Kay is quarantining uh, with them. He's going to be fine, but he didn't think it was appropriate for him to come today. I mean, how do you send a message out to everybody saying, here are the rules, and then you don't follow the rules? And if you know Jonathan, he, he's, uh, he leads by example. Um, and he's leading by example, believe it or not, by not being here. But he really, really was looking forward to this and wanted to be here. Um, but we're going to get through it. Um, we're taught that whenever uh, two or more are gathered in his name, Jesus is with us. And with all due respect to Jonathan and the rest of us, Jesus is the most important uh, being who's here today. And we're, we're glad to be back in worship. Um, you know, they do say that public speaking is, is the number one fear that people have. And I sometimes have that, that dream that maybe you have where you're showing up for an exam and you realize I haven't studied for this exam. I don't know what's on this exam. I'm really nervous. So that's me today, but uh, it's just like that, except I'm awake and I'm wearing pants. But we will get through this together. Welcome, welcome to Munholland. Please join me in the responsive reading from Psalm 24. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God, their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Please join me in singing when morning gilds the skies. <laughs> shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, 
nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hi, Munholland Church family. This is Rhonda Knox. I just want to give you an update on our Sunday school situation. Beginning next Sunday, the 12th, we will allow Sunday school to meet here in the building. But just don't assume that your Sunday school class is going to meet here in the facility. Many Sunday school classes um, are going to decide based on class participation, the class size, how many people they're reaching that are out of state, whether they might want to continue Zoom for a while or meet here at the facility. So your church um, Sunday school leader will let you know whether your class will meet here at the facility or will continue on Zoom. We are also going to be having our church open to small groups and Bible studies. If you would like to have the uh, facility for your small group, just contact the church office and let them know the day and the time and the number of participants and we will find you a space. Um, that would be, uh, Natalie will arrange that and she will be in contact with you. Just leave her a message. And I also am going to be leading a Bible study this summer. It's called Counter Culture. It will begin this coming Tuesday the 7th at 6 o'clock. It will be on Zoom, and it is for six weeks. If you'd like to join me, I'd love to have you. Just contact rknox at munhollandchurch.org. So next Sunday is another exciting day here at Munhollan. We'll be so excited to, uh, to return to Sunday school. Elementary school kids are going to have a great time. They're going to be in the fellowship hall, so there's lots of room to spread out there. And you'll be in your little social distancing hula hoops as you do your crafts and your games and uh, a Bible lesson as well in there. And for the youth, uh, we'll have something both for middle school and for high school. Uh, up in the youth area in the different uh, the room 200 and 201 and uh, we'll play some trivia games and just catch up and we'll also have a uh, Bible lesson together there with social distancing as well. So we're really excited to be coming back for Sunday School.
reading is from 1 Corinthians 8, 1 through 6. Now about food sacrificed to idols, we know that we all possess knowledge, but knowledge puffs up while love builds up. Those who think they know something do not yet know as they ought to know, but whoever loves God is known by God. So then, about eating food sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came and for whom we live, and there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ through whom all things came, and through whom we live. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. O Lord, our God, in whom we live and move and have our being, please be with us in this most difficult year. Comfort the sick and surround them with your healing presence. Give strength to those who are on the front lines fighting this terrible virus. Surround and sustain those who are struggling financially, those who are grieving lost loved ones and those who suffer the stings of injustice. Give our leaders divine wisdom as they struggle to make decisions that affect us all. And most of all, dear God, give us thankful hearts that are grateful for the many blessings that you have given us. And give us faith to believe that nothing can separate us from the Lord our God, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.
Our scripture reading for today is from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Word of God for the people of God. Amen. Before I talk about this passage, I wanted to, has everybody been following along on Sundays and watching the online services? I, I just wanted to to talk to you for a second about how hard that is to put on and how much work Jonathan and his staff 
uh, have put into getting that done, and our music program. I mean, you, you look at it, and it looks relatively seamless, and you have a tendency to think it would be easier than coming into church and doing it, and nothing could be further from the truth. A few weeks ago, uh, Jonathan asked me to, to help do the liturgy, to be the liturgist. Nobody can do that like Mary Kay can. She just looks, she's so relaxed. There's always a beautiful background. And he said, well, we like to do it outside because it gives a nice feeling. And I said, piece of cake. I'll, I, I'll, I set aside 20 minutes to do it. Two hours later, we were outside. I had the kids helping me holding up what I was supposed to read. I would get to the end of it. Something would blow the paper and I couldn't read it. would have to cut and start again. I got through to the, the best run that I had. I get to the last line, my neighbor cranks up his chainsaw. I mean, you, you don't realize what goes into the production of these services every week and how hard everybody's worked. So um, I just wanted to, to thank, and Owen, thank you so much for your role in helping to cut and splice. For those of us who are technologically challenged, and I'm one, I mean, there's just a debt of gratitude. I don't know if we'll ever be able to repay to you for keeping us going and our entire staff. So I just wanted to say that. Uh, the passage today on love, I think, is one we're all familiar with. If you've been to any wedding ever in your life, you've probably heard the, the famous uh, Corinthians passage about love is patient, love is kind, which is in this particular uh, chapter of Corinthians. And uh, I think it's something we can all relate to. Uh, it's something we've certainly grown up with in the church. And the distinction between love and knowledge that Paul points out, I think, is important. I mean, how many times, even now, do you... We have these, these sayings, right, in our culture. Talk is cheap is one of them you'll hear people say. Um, Don't listen to what that person says. Watch what they do. Have you heard that one? That's something that we, that, that's sort of a, it's a, on July 4th, that's an American axiom, right? We, we look at, we judge people by what they do, not by what they say. Um, put your money where your mouth is. You know, there's, there's very few things more American than that statement. And, and these are all things that we tend to be distrustful of, of what people say. And we also tend to think that there's a, a difference in terms of uh, quality, character, if you will, between something you say, whether it's online or in person, and actually getting out and doing the work that God needs to have done in the world. And we, we draw those distinctions all the time. <clears throat> this passage, I think, is a, is a challenge because Paul says uh, not only is there a difference between love and knowledge, you can be the, the smartest scripture scholar in the world, and it doesn't mean anything if you don't have love. But he also says, if I give all I possess to the poor, but don't have love, I gain nothing. I think that one is a little bit harder. Uh, you know, what, is, what message is Paul trying to get to us there? Because after all, we're not just talking the talk, right? We're walking the walk. We're, we're reaching, we're putting our money where our mouth is. Um, we're doing something for people that's different than just talking about doing something for people, and that ought to count for more. And yet Paul is saying without love, it really doesn't mean anything. And I was thinking on, about that on the drive here this morning, and when you, when you get down to what Paul is trying to teach us here, it's really an insight into what love is and, and what love can do. And the, the first thing I think love is, is it's in, intensely democratic with a little d. Uh, it, it's open to all. When you think about knowledge, God may have gifted some with the ability to understand Scripture and talk about Scripture and memorize Scripture and have a great historical understanding of where it comes from. Some have that, certainly not everybody does. God may have gifted some people with the ability to give a lot of money to charity, to make donations to the poor, to 
put a lot of money where their mouth is. Uh, God has given some the ability to do that. He hasn't given everyone the ability to do that. But one thing God has given to each and every person, not only in the United States, not only in Louisiana, but across the world, is the ability to love. A heart to be able to love. A heart to be able to give love and to receive love. And so that's something that's, it, it, it's, when I say it's intensely democratic, that's what I mean. We all have that ability if it's nurtured and if it comes from the right place. And I think that's what, what Paul is telling us here. Uh, the other thing about love that I think makes it different from the other things Paul is talking about is when you think about knowledge, there's a, there's a finite amount of knowledge any human being can hold in their brain, right? You, you just, you run out of storage space at some time, and when you start to get old, you forget where the storage space was, where you put that, and you can't access it. So there's, there's a finite ability of, of any of us to learn. We can learn new things, but we can't learn infinite new things. And I think the same is true for, for giving. The other example, eventually you run out of stuff to give. You can give generously, but there's a finite amount of uh, wealth that you have. There's a finite amount of time that you have. You can exhaust yourself giving to people for, for great good of people and great good of the community, but you only have 24 hours in a day and you have to sleep and you have to eat. So there's a finiteness to that. Love, I think, is different. And I think it's different for a lot of reasons, but the primary reason is that love is something that is not finite. Love is something that you really do have an inexhaustible supply of. God has put that in you. When you think about having a child, those of you who have had more than one child, <clears throat> you love that first child, but when you have the second child, you don't love the first child any less you're granted the ability and the grace and the power and the resources from God to have enough love to go around for both of those children. And of course, the same thing happens if you have three or four children. And the same thing applies to everybody in our lives. And those of you who have, have given that love or felt that love know how powerful it is, whether it's for a child or a parent or a spouse or a friend, uh, or anyone else, it's something that you've been able to access and you know that when you're really dialed into that love that God has put in all of our hearts, it's something that can exponentially increase. It doesn't diminish. Um, and not only is there not a finite supply of it, but it expands when it's used. So I think Paul's message about love is one that uh, is important for that reason. That's why we all know as Christians that love is the most important virtue and the most important thing we're supposed to be concentrating on. The, the what would Jesus do? You know, the little WWJD thing that was very popular and still should be, I think is a great way of encompassing that. Uh, you know, what, do we, what would Jesus do in this situation? And if we always look to love first and not knowledge and not what we can do with our finite resources, I think we'll be on the right path to what Paul's trying to teach us in this, in this passage. The last thing I'll say about it is I, I remember a friend once telling me, we were talking about giving to the poor and particularly rolling down your window and giving money to a homeless person on the street. And we were, we were debating whether or not is that a good thing, should we be doing it, are we encouraging this sort of behavior um, is this something doing more harm than good? What are they going to use it for? And my friend said, you know, I just, I have all those questions, but I just do it, and I leave all the rest up to God. And I think what he was saying is we tend to think of love as something we give to another person. Well, people are hard to love. A lot of people are hard to love. And a lot of times we're going to be disappointed if we're giving not out of love, but to get something in return. God, God's love is not disappointing. 
our love for God is always returned to us a thousandfold. And so whenever you see a neighbor that's hard to love, whenever you see a whole group of people that are hard to love, uh, always remember that, uh, as I think Dr. King said, hate can't drive out hate, but love can drive out, love's the only thing that can drive out hate. Love works like that in a lot of ways. Love works with the difficult neighbor. Love works with the difficult situation. And like my friend said, our job is to practice love, to practice love of our neighbors, to practice love of those who might be hard to love. And in the course of doing so, to, we're doing it out of our love for Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father. And when we do that, Scripture teaches us God will take care of the rest. Let us pray. Lord, as we go through our lives this week, we're going to be confronted with situations. We're going to be confronted with difficulties. We're going to be confronted with uh, challenges this week uh, to practicing your love for our neighbor that you instructed us and that you asked us to practice. When we get in those situations, Lord, help us this week to remember that in showing love for our neighbors under all circumstances, we are really showing love to you and expressing love to you and trusting in you that when we pour out our love onto others, that you're going to return that love uh, to them and to us for the betterment of your kingdom here on earth. Amen. to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory blameless with great joy to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory majesty dominion and power before all time both now and forever amen